So many of us don't have time for art. So what do you do when you have the strong desire to be creative and to express yourself artistically, but feel like you don't have the time to do so? How about carving out the tiniest bit of time in your day for art? Can you spare five minutes or sets of five minutes throughout your day? I'm pretty sure that you could manage that, but would it be enough to create? It can be if you approach it in the right way. I'm Marguerite Miller, a collage artist who uses vintage papers to make art. I learned to approach the creation of collages in five minute increments spread throughout my day. This was out of necessity because I had two small children at home and couldn't devote more than short sets of time to art before parenting duties called. In this video, I'm going to cover how you can get to that place where you are efficiently working on a project when you only have, say, five minutes a day. I'm going to help you decide what you want to work on and what kinds of supplies that you need, how to choose a project that you can be successful in creating, give you ideas of where you'll create your work, and show you how to create collages. But first, let me talk about collage art in general and why I think it's great for anyone wanting to be creative. What's so great about collage art? Any art takes time. The great thing about collage art is that you can break up the process of creating into increments as short as five minutes and keep making progress over the course of a day or a week. So why is this ideal for creatives who are short on time? Firstly, because you can start and stop without too much fuss. You don't need to set up a canvas and to prepare a palette of paints to get going. You don't need to use up paint or other wet mediums before they dry out. The only thing you need to remember to do when you're done in collage is to put the cap back on your glue stick. Secondly, collage art can be done anywhere. Most people create collages at home, but you can also collage while you're traveling, on a work break, or while you're at your child's sports practice, for example. You can pack it up and take it almost anywhere. Thirdly, once you start creating collages, completing even the smallest of projects will give you a feeling of satisfaction and fulfill that need you have in you to be creative. So let's start with figuring out the kind of collage art you'd like to do and the type of project you'd like to work on. So I've got some slides I'm going to use to help us go through this information. To get to that place where you are efficiently working on a project when you have, say, only five minutes a day, you'll need to have a specific project in mind. How do you find that project? Having a narrow scope will help you so that when you're ready to go work on something, you're not wasting your time. When you're ready to go, you'll be thinking in your mind, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to make. So you need to figure out the kind of collage art you like and what you would like to do. Why is it necessary to have a specific project in mind? Again, having a narrow scope means that you are going to be using your time purposefully. So find concrete examples of what you'd like to create. I'm sure you're familiar with pinning images that you like. You can also save images on Instagram and liking videos on YouTube allows you to go back and to find those videos and watch them again if you would like. Don't spend too much time browsing. Get two or three good ideas. Otherwise, you're going to procrastinate from too many choices. So what are you looking for in a project? Is there a specific style or a look that you want to create with paper? Maybe it's Victorian, it's 60s, it's modern. What about the goal? Do you want to take on a project that 
has a personal connection or do you want to just do something that's fun? And the last question to think about is where will you be creating? Do you have a designated spot in your house where you can do work on a project and nobody else is going to touch it? Do you have like a, a desk or do you have an area in a room where you can put something down like a tray table and you can do work on this tray table and if you put it, leave it somewhere, nobody's going to touch it. A tray table is really good if you uh, can take it down and you know work on something pretty much anywhere because they're mobile and then you can set that tray table somewhere um, and then nobody's going to bother it. So one example of where you can find ideas is on Instagram. Instagram has its positives and negatives, of course, um, but what's good about it is that if you have it on your mobile phone, you can look for images in your spare time when you have a minute or two, you can save images and then come back and look at those images closely later on. You can type in words into a search bar and it's going to pull up images, right? That go along with these, with the search. And then once you have a huge amount of these images, then you create this little archive of things that you're interested in and it will help you choose a project that you think that you would like to work on. Now I want to talk a little bit about expectations and success. Many people fail to start making art because of high expectations and unreasonable goals. Elaborate art takes skills developed over time, but even simple art can be very fulfilling and make you happy. So one of the reasons for creating art is to feel good about what you make and to feel good about yourself. And a good way to make sure that happens is to pick a project that you're capable of completing. So as a beginner, look for projects that are simple, yet interesting, fun, and okay to mess up. Avoid projects with high emotional value or those that need a lot of time to complete. If you don't have a lot of time to devote for making art, you want to be able to enter and exit your project as quickly as possible. So as I was talking about that tray table, for example, imagine all of a sudden you have a free block of time and you're like, oh, this is unexpected. Um, what should I do? If you go into your craft room, for example, and your desk is a mess, uh, you don't really remember where everything is. Um, you're overwhelmed by all the stimulation that's in your space you're not going to use your time in a creative way. You're going to be thinking about that you need to clean, you need to organize, right? And you'll just be overwhelmed. But if you have that little desk tray table that has a project that is already waiting for you to come back to a specific project in mind, you'd be able to just start pretty much immediately. And then if you have to stop, you just set your tray table down, you know, pick it up, put it somewhere out of the way, and then go, go back about your business, your regular day. Keep in mind that simpler projects can be completed in less time. Keep things simple, have fun, enjoy art, and don't be afraid to make mistakes. Making mistakes is something that's going to happen, right? Nobody gets it right on the first try. So it's so important to have an open mind with mistakes to say, okay, you know what? Mistakes are going to happen and that's all right. One of the ways that I remind myself this again and again is reading through this printout that I made. It's called forward. I call it forward because I print them out and I paste them inside the beginning of a glue book so that I can read through it and remind myself of these really important lessons. And you might have already heard me talk about this because I, I do talk about this a lot. Um, and I prov I'll provide the link 
for you to print this out yourself. And maybe you don't need to print it out, but read through it and decide if you need to internalize this message or not, because I do think that it's an important message. All right, so next, let's talk about supplies. Where do you find papers to collage with? Now again, here is another paper that I do like to provide. It's a printout, a list of places where I find interesting papers around me. So that's also in the description box. Read through the list, um, start to think about some ideas of where you can find papers if you, if you don't already have your own papers to work with. Always be on the lookout for, for interesting papers, right? Um, and once, once you start to realize all the places that you can find interesting papers, you'll be, you'll be surprised at, at the amount of stuff that you quickly accumulate. What other tools do you need? Obviously you need a glue stick, some kind of glue. What kind of glue? I completely believe, <laughs> totally believe, the only kind of glue that you need is a glue stick. Um, any other kinds of wet mediums or, or matte medium, use whatever glue that you have and that you're comfortable using, but the simplest is a glue stick and it's also the cheapest, honestly. You don't need expensive glue, glue stick um, to use. Just make sure that when you are using glue stick on your papers, you're getting a good, a good coverage so that your papers stick onto your substrate. That's, that's pretty much it. You, do you need scissors? Mm, I don't use scissors very often. Uh, honestly, mo most of the time I just tear papers. Um, but of course, use scissors if you like. I also like to use a straight edge ruler to tear things. That's important to me. Other supplies, of course, if you have washi tape, uh, rubber stamps, things, you know, those are kind of additional embellishments. The most important things, of course, are paper. Right, so what about substrate? What about a glue book, for example? A place where you can glue your collages into. So there are lots of options. You can choose a blank notebook, an altered book, meaning that you take an existing published book and you place your collages inside on those pages. You could also do index cards, playing cards, a journal. You can do a blank journal or you can do a journal that already has been journaled in and you collage on top of the journal pages. You can you also use a handmade junk journal. Lots of people say, I make junk journals and I don't know what to do with them. Well, junk journals are like the best thing that you can use to turn in to a glue book. Some of the factors you might be thinking about when you're deciding about a glue book are cost, um, you know, do you want to spend money on something? What about availability? I, I don't want to go to the store. I don't want to make a special trip, you know, to go buy a blank journal. Let me just find an old college notebook or something that I can put my collages in, right? Um, maybe you want to use something repurposed. You want to use something old versus something new, or maybe not. Maybe you want a clean slate. I want to start with blank, clean pages, and that's that, right? Size, how big do you want the pages and how many pages do you want in them? And don't forget, you can always tear pages out if, if you are concerned that your, your finished result is going to get really bulky, then absolutely tear out pages in the beginning. And then also the scope of the project, um, right? I mean, depending on what you want to do with those pages, it could be bigger or smaller. All right, so when you're ready to start, here's the things to think about. Make sure you've got a project idea, make sure you've got papers, you've got glue, and you have something to glue your papers into, which is a glue book. So what do you do? What kind of projects? What, if you're ready to start and uh, you kind of know what you want to do, you know you want to do some things with collage, what do you do? So if you don't have a whole lot of time and you want to do some collage art. One of the best kinds of collage that you can do are assignment collages. And what these are is something that I came up with to help people, 
to focus on finding particular kinds of papers from an assignment to help you create a finished collage. Some people get overwhelmed with the idea of collage and what papers do I choose and how do I assemble them? How do I put it together? Um, having an assignment kind of narrows down that scope so that you are looking just for specific papers. And for example, I'll give you some examples. A typical assignment contains uh, five prompts plus a bonus. So maybe, some, for example, one of those prompts is something round. And another prompt is something with a spine. Um, so find an image of something that might have a spine. That could be a book or that could be an animal, right? Uh, something in the color blue, an old postage stamp, um, a piece of text paper, paper from a book. So there's a list of five prompts and then there's a bonus prompt, which is um, just in case you are not able to find one of the five, you can swap that out for what is the bonus. So once you have those five things, then you can look through your papers. And here's where the interesting part is. Even if you are not physically collaging, you are engaging your brain creatively. You know, you're like, hmm, let me think, where do I have, where could I find an image of something with a spine, right? And maybe, maybe you don't rush and you don't go and get all of your pages all at once. Maybe through your day, you're keeping your eyes open and you're just kind of thinking about it in the back of your mind. And then you might come across something, you know, later in the day. You're, you're just engaging yourself creatively. And this, this creativity in your, in your mind, it creates a happiness, a happy place for you, right? So you don't need to be physically sitting down at your desk or wherever creating to to have that sense that feeling that you are doing in a creative doing something in a creative way so then say that you gather all of your your elements all of your prompts and then you know you're out of time i don't have time anymore to to continue that's fine you know you set your papers down on your tray table i'm, I'm really doubling down on that tray table you set your things down, put them aside, go do whatever you need to do. And then again, when you have another free set of five minutes um, or longer, um, then you come back to your project and you have these papers in front of you. Okay, where was I? All right, I've got my five papers. Let's see about putting them in a collage. So if you have five papers, that's, that's already something. You know you're gonna be working with these five pieces of paper. In addition to the paper, you are free to add some background paper, you know, some additional um, something from a um, paper pad, you know, grab some something else. And you can also add some embellishments, but of course, you know, put your papers down first before you add any embellishments. So start working with your, start working with your papers, um, move them around. That's the great thing about collage is that nothing is glued. You don't have to worry about anything wet, right? You can take your time. If you put your five papers down, arrange them and you're like, hmm, I'm not sure. Oh, but I'm out of time anyway. I've got to go off and do something, right? Then you leave the papers down on your glue book in a position. You go away and you come back in a half an hour or tomorrow, right? So you come back and you see exactly where you left those papers on your collage and you think, this looks great, I like it. Or you know what, I think I'm gonna move those papers around because I'm, I'm not really happy with it, right? So all this time, even though it's in really small increments, all this time your brain is engaged creatively. And just knowing that you have a project that you can come back to and that you can continue working on it doesn't matter that it's in small increments, right? You feel, you have this feeling of accomplishment. You feel like something is getting done, right? Which is hugely important. This is hugely important. So that's what assignments are. Um, the more often you do them, 
the easier and the more fun they get. That's in my experience and what also what a lot of other people tell me. Um, some people would rather not do assignments. So here are the pros. The assignments are focused based. Um, less is more, right? You're not worrying about so many choices. Um, it's open to interpretation. Um, sometimes, for example, I'll have another uh, a, a prompt, something with legs, right? So again, you can choose furniture, you can choose an animal, you can choose people, whatever. And it can be completed relatively quickly. Maybe you don't want to overthink things. Maybe you just want to find things and put them down and move on to the next assignment, right? That's totally fine. It's up to you, entirely up to you. But with the cons, some people feel hemmed in. You know, I don't, I, I really want to have more choices. I, I am not interested in being confined to just those things. The, the selection is too limited and you, they get bored with it, right? So it's up to you. It's up to the individual on what kind of collage they would like to do. If you're not interested in assignments, there's free form collage, right? You've got your papers, you've got a glue book, and there you go. So a lack of time doesn't mean that you can't create art. A lack of time means that you need to have a specific project to work on, a project where you're focused on tasks, prepared materials, and a designated workspace. If you are interested in learning more about how to start collage and some basic practice with collage, um, there are some videos that I've made regarding this that might be helpful to you. So I will put links to that in the description and also here in this video. So if you found this video to be useful, if you've learned something, do hit the like button. It will help others find it. And if you have any questions, of course, uh, please let me know, let, write them in the comments. I hope that this inspires you to, to do some collage art and to realize that yes, there is art that you can make in very short periods of time. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you the next time.